This one concerned me the most out of all of the ones I covered about, you know, potential illness fakers. Now, this is another one that had not, has not, and may never face any sort of court action because, you know, she's asking for donations. She's not saying she has cancer. She's saying she has a different illness, um, mitochondrial disease, which is is very misunderstood or not understood in science. So it's one of those that's like, okay, take my word for it kind of things. Um, and, but the thing that concerns me the most about her and she, just to spoil the plot once again, um, she's still alive. She's still on TikTok asking for donations, insinuating she's got days to live. Uh, and I get, I did this video back in February, 2021. And, uh, she said, she's got, you know, like any day now I'm going to be gone and my kids are going to be without a mother. Um, she also emailed me and, the thing with her, the one, the emails with Crankly Rara, I sort of can in my head confirm, or I, I don't know, in my head, there's enough corroboration because she has her email listed on her YouTube account and her YouTube account shows videos that are of Lindsay. So I'm like, okay, this is most likely coming from actually Lindsay. With Amarissa, her emails are not, it says Amarissa on it, like as her you know name, but anyone can just do that. Anyone can just email me and say they are someone and her email wasn't posted anywhere. So I, I believe it was her, but I don't want to share that because, you know, if it's not her, then it's just all bullshit anyways. Um, but basically this one was she said her she has a terminal illness and all of her children also have a terminal illness and that she hopes that her kids die first before her so that they don't have to live life without her there. So uh, that was where I was like, hold up. What the hell? Um, so let's get to this part. And also there was some intrigue here because she, uh, she he uses eyeshadow in some of her TikToks and um, there is, to make it look like she's got, hold on, let's just go to her, let's go to her page today and then we'll go back in time. Let's let's mix it up a little bit Um, because I've noticed it again recently. Let's see. Okay, so here's her page. Tough night. She's got a lot of, she does a lot of like lip syncing videos. Um, and it says, okay, this is from four days ago. It says, I'm still here. I'm still fighting to create memories, to learn, to grow, to heal, to love, to inspire. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Okay. Okay. So final part, um, go back and watch all the other parts if you need to catch up. Um, so sorry, it's taken so many videos, but as you can see, um, it's not a normal like my life isn't normal and the diagnosis that me and my kids have aren't your everyday diagnoses so um where we left off i um a couple months ago started doing um therapy and it was in the effort to um not feel out of control in um well, that's good being able to let go Um, I was having a very hard time knowing that my children were going to lose their mom at such young ages. Um, and I, I just, it was, it was very painful for me. So I started working with the therapist and when I started working with the therapist, we realized that, um, the trauma work that I thought I had done, um, wasn't really enough. And- okay. Well, this is her now. Now, this is not the eyeshadow that I'm talking about. Um, but you hear her talking today, right? Like, okay, they're going to, you know, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Two years ago, it was like the same thing, the same exact thing. Like, I'm, I'm close. Like, it's about to any day now, any day now. Um, okay. Here's, here's the eyeshadow example. Now, I speculated in the video that the eyeshadow thing was an attempt to make it look like she's got some sort of eye disorder. And the person who emailed me, who I believe to be Amarissa, but can't confirm necessarily, um, 
said, no, it is actually a condition that I have that makes my eyes discolored sometimes. But it's to the point where every day it looks different. Like today it's purpley pinkish. Um, and then sometimes it's, well, I guess this is a filter on top, but it's like more, you know, like exaggerated. Um, and then here it's like normal. Like obviously it looks like makeup. So you put makeup on top of the discoloration, I guess. And then here it's back to sort of being like, you know, mystical or whatever. I don't know. So, okay. So let's go back to the video. So that's, so she's up there still doing the thing, still, you know, still wearing the canula. Um, no, oh, that's her. Okay. Hold on. Let's, let's just play it. I forget what I said in this one. And to me, this is just the biggest red flag that I could ever I did that so much before. See, mm. And it shocked me, honestly. Pray for me. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and I have another story about a TikToker who has some questionable things on their feed and I'm gonna go into a lot of details. Trigger warning right now. This one is a little bit more serious than the other videos I've made in the past. I usually try to keep like somewhat of a jovial tone. This one's gonna be a little bit more serious because it does involve children. And right off the top, I wanna to say, I do not know this person in real life. I do not know any more than what I've seen online. I'm putting pieces together based on my own opinions. Also, please do not send anyone I talk about hate. The support- Yeah, same rules apply. Okay, whatever, we get it, Kayla. All right, don't send anyone hate. There he is right now. So without further ado, let's start from the beginning. When I first came across Life with Amarissa on TikTok, I was told to look at this page because this woman appeared to put eyeshadow on her eyes and below to make it look like maybe she had um, some sort of discoloration on her eyes. Hey guys, I just wanted to update you. I'm still really struggling to catch my breath and my heart's struggling a lot keep up but i'm still fighting it just looks a little odd because it's eyeshadow on top and the bottom i mean maybe <laughs> that's just a style that i'm unaware of or is it supposed to look like this is caused by her illness? style i'm unaware of in the of. comments some people were debating whether she put eyeshadow on or if this was caused by her illness which she claims is terminal mitochondrial disease I don't have a whole lot of information. Actually, it seems like no one has a whole lot of information about mitochondrial disease because it is rare. And she didn't really clear up any of the questions going on. So she just has the video and she kind of like leaves two it cold to, you to make video. her own interpretations, whether she was just putting eyeshadow on in kind of an odd way, or if this was actually caused by her illness. As you'll see throughout some of her videos, some there's nothing there. There's no eyeshadow. She looks totally normal, blank slate. And then some you'll see pink, some you'll see orange, and then this purple. I just thought it was kind of interesting and uh, leave it at that. Amaris's account starts in 2019, but if you go onto Facebook, she actually started documenting her journey with mitochondrial disease on Facebook back in like 2012. However, it wasn't her battle with the disease, it was her son, her oldest son, who allegedly has this disorder. So back then she was raising money for certain walks. She was posting about his journey, um, posting photos. It looks like he might've been in a wheelchair at one point. Um, and she has two other children who then she says also. See, this is where I started to go eat. Okay, you know, I guess the outcome is better that she eventually switched it, it seems to focusing on herself, but it looks like almost the beginning of what could possibly be like a by proxy situation. Now, obviously I'm nobody, I know nothing about anything. So I'm not, you know, saying that that's what it is. But um, if you're familiar with like uh, that one famous case, um, Gypsy Rose, you know, that was a Munchausen's by proxy I don't know, case um, where the, the person who's in charge tells the child they have a disorder or disease and they're the ones who are running the show. Um, and it's a way to you know garner attention online. There's a new phenomenon called Munchausen's by internet, 
which basically is the same thing as Munchausen's and Munchausen's by proxy. It's been called something else now. I think they updated the terms. Like there's a different term for it. And I'm, I apologize. I don't know what, I don't know what offhand right now, but um, basically it's like, you know, people who want to get attention on the internet will come up with these scenarios, these things, and they may or may not have what they're actually saying. Some of it's a money-making scheme. It's pretty, you know, simple. They want to make money. They know they can appeal to an emotional heartstring. And some of it's more complicated, where I think in this case, it's mo- it's not so much, it is about money. There is a money component for sure, but it's more about attention. It's more about people going, oh, warrior, prayers for you, like, love you. Oh my gosh, like, you are the best. And just continually having that supply of attention so had the disorder okay so here's where things get weird and i actually discovered this after i recorded my on-camera part of this video okay children. it's sort of interesting but basically it's just she's talking about all the kids and like when they got diagnosed and it changes a couple times you know depending on what day you're seeing it and here's a question that someone asked that i thought was interesting um Okay, this is the one that's like the one that is like, okay, this is the crux of this story and why it's interesting. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's just, she's making like a, like a uh, what do you call it? A um, stitch on TikTok, which is basically when you take someone else's video and you make it your own video by reacting to their video. So very meta like this in some ways. Um, it says my three boys, so this is from 2019, July. So we're going back in time. Twenty, you know, the twenty twelve was when the sun. She had the page for the sun. Now it's twenty nineteen, and she's talking about my kids should go first. Twenty twenty two, she's still talking about my illness and whatever and raising money and stuff. So it's a long time to be terminally ill, I believe. I think personally, but you know, miracles happen, I guess. Uh, my three boys and I all have a terminal illness. I wonder who will pass first. I want my boys to live a long life, but I also don't want them raised by parents who were abusive. So I think it would be better for them to die before me. But to face the idea of my three boys dying haunts my dreams. <laughs> and I was saying like. Yeah, I hope it I hope it haunts your dreams. That is probably every parent's you know worst nightmare. And to even suggest that, you know, oh, uh, I want my boys to live a long life, but it's like I don't know. That just shocked me completely. Um, and then here's again, like, okay, 2022, she's talking about her oh geez, <laughs> screenshot. Um screen or uh 2022 she's still talking about like her illness and her prognosis and whatever this is what she was talking about in 2020 see it seems like the last few weeks it's really been ramping up again for where she's saying that she only has limited time left you know she doesn't know how long she's gonna make it her body is ready for peace i think that's insinuating death in my this one says pain and love show me i am alive in this beautiful world i am still fighting but my body is ready for peace opinion she says that it says mito has caused stroke like episode and this time i've lost ability to walk but i am home with my boys fighting until god calls me home now it says five days ago but this is from like 2020 she's fighting until god calls me home so kind of more you soon i love you forever i love you okay then it says never goodbye just see you soon i love you forever and then this one if I die, I want everyone to know. Everyone to know. She talks about being a mom. And she puts like this whole thing. And there's a lot. Oh, we can keep playing it. How much that meant to her. Again, this is uh, from April of 2020. She says, it's not goodbye. Just see you again. I love you all so much. I want you all to know how much you touched my life. So it's almost like, I want you to know how much you've touched my life. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm dying. Here's one from January where she's showing a picture of her children hugging her and she's saying not ready to say goodbye. She says she has heart failure, organ failure. She's got respiratory issues, heart failure, kidney failure. Heart failure is worsening, heart failure, LV aneurysm, multi-organ failure. She's had sepsis <laughs> sorry, about I don't mean to laugh. 11 times a lot. in that short period of time. So from 2019 to today. Okay, septic again, urosepsis. 
she has a 30% chance of survival because of her fungal infection that's causing sepsis, organ failure, sepsis labs have worsened, multi-organ failure because of sepsis, and again, sepsis. Also, she has all of the online fundraisers except for GoFundMe. Hi, my name is Marissa and I have three amazing sons and we live each and every day with a mitochondrial disease. It is life-threatening, progressive, and no cure or treatments, which leads to a lot of hospital stays and doctor's appointments. Over the past few months, I've been going into respiratory and heart failure and I've missed a lot of holidays with my sons. I'm getting stronger every day and will be going home soon. I would love to celebrate my three sons' birthdays and make it a very special day, but as a single mom, I don't have the financial means to make this as special as it could be. That's where I need help. I've created an Amazon wish list of the things that we need, and I know my boys would love to make this day special. So, um, God has really blessed me, and um, He's blessed a few people from TikTok that have reached out and have um, sent us a little bit, well, help, <laughs> blessings. Um, financially and it's been amazing and I can't I don't have words I'm so grateful um but I do have in my bio I have a link tree that has an Amazon wish list of things that I need for physical needs but also things that my boys need things that they want games toys um I have Venmo cash app and PayPal all linked in there it's in my bio if anybody wants to help me to make a bucket list dream come true for my boys to have Christmas in July, it would mean a lot. Okay, so there, she's like, I'm going to have Christmas in July in 2020 because I don't know if I'm going to make it to real Christmas was the insinuation there. Like, let's, again, urgency. Like, I'm leaving the planet. We need to have Amazon delivered to my door today. And then, again, two years later, about to be three years later, Hey guys, it's me. I, I want to update you on my diagnosis. It's like, ugh. but in this TikTok from Christmas time, she's insinuating that all of those Amazon boxes behind her are from her TikTok following. And she's basically saying, thank you that you guys are better than my real family. Um, and she's doing that. It says, uh, thank you for making a Christmas miracle happen for a family. Words will never be enough. Grateful for my TikTok family. By just lip syncing over a song, basically saying that. Another thing that she says is that, you know, when she's in the hospital. Oh yeah. Okay. This is a big thing, debate that came up when I started covering um, these people. It's like, what's hospice versus, because they all say they're on hospice. Like that's a big storyline that a lot of these people say. I'm in hospice right now. Now there's debate between palliative care and I had to like learn the definitions and I'm still confused. I have a feeling, and maybe I'm wrong, but I have a feeling that they're all in palliative care is one of my thoughts. The second thought I have is maybe there's a company that is sort of like privy to this type of wanting, like some people want to be on hospice so that they can claim they're on hospice. And maybe they, they offer a service. Like we do hospice for anybody. Maybe there's no, I don't know if hospice is like a specific, like, you know, term that you can only get. Usually there's like criteria, but I wonder if like a private company is saying it's hospice and it's not actually, cause they all have claimed it's hospice and like their family members will say, no, it's, it's hospice. They're definitely on hospice, but like they're there for several years from what I understand. And it's like, they're, they're at hospice at home. So they have a, someone come in and do that. But like, I, I don't know. Palliative care is like for anybody, I guess. If you need help, if you have a medical condition, if you have anything, you can hire a palliative care nurse. But then they are all calling it a hospice. I don't know. So there's lots of stuff. So she talks about hospice a lot and, and you know, why and wh how hard it is to be in hospice and whatever. Um, but then she'll say like, I quit hospice to go to the hospital to get this treatment. And now I'm going to go back on hospice. It's like, isn't that not what it's for? Anyways, um, so again, she still hasn't uh, stopped. She went private for a little bit after the video came out. And then she went back public probably two, three weeks later. Um, so again, if she didn't want, she, I think it's, it's worth their time perhaps to, and I say their time, worth her time to, um, to open it public because, 
you know, that's the way she's going to get more donations, I think, more Venmos and P.O. Box things um, versus going private because, you know, there's more of a churn and burn type thing with these types of people. Um, anyways, so that's that. <laughs> that's Amarissa. A little crazy, a little scary. Uh, if you want to watch the video, fo- the video of the original, there's lots and lots and lots of things to look at. Um, you know, document, not documents, but like uh, documented timeline of everything. Yeah.